Hey guys, Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about homes in Skyrim. I don't know about you, but I love the idea of owning a place in Skyrim. Aside from the obvious aspects of a place to store your gear, a place to sleep and so on, I really like the immersion aspects of owning your own home. But let's be honest, the original homes in Skyrim, they were a bit basic and lifeless. One of the first homes in Skyrim most players owned was Bree's home in Whiterun, and I loved this at first. Having a home in a key early location felt really cool. But there's not a huge amount going on here, is there? I know it's probably supposed to be pretty basic, but yeah, not a lot going on here. Now this did improve a little bit with the Half-Fire DLC, which introduced building your own home and giving more of a say in how you decorated them, being able to choose specific room types and having elements such as individual decorations and mannequins to put armour on. In this video I will cover all 9 new homes that come with Skyrim Anniversary Edition and how to get each one, so let's get into it. So first upon this list we have Tundra Homestead. To get this one all you have to do is speak to the steward Preventus after you are able to buy property. And you can buy this one for 7500 gold. And this house is located just east of Whiterun, here on the map. And here we are. I actually really like the look of this house from the outside. So we have this area on the left here which I think is to keep animals. Then we have all our crafting tables and so on on the right hand side. And finally at the rear we have a small garden and an apiary. So let's check out the interior. Now immediately look at the difference between this and Bree's home. It's so welcoming and the attention to detail in the Anniversary Edition homes is amazing. We have a desk and seating area at the front. And at the rear we have this lovely dining table and fire. In the kitchen area, I mean, look at the detail here with the food and we even have cutlery. The bedroom is to the left and comes with two single beds and then a master bed. And again, the detailing is nice. And then to the right of the house, we have a crafting table and enchanting table, which is pretty nice. It comes with a load of gear for us to use. Now, if we go into the basement, firstly, at the front, you have this library area, kitted out with a few pre-filled bookcases, one on either side of the door, which is pretty nice. Plus there's an empty bookcase to use if you wish. And you go through this gate here and we come into the armory. And this is fresh with a ton of mannequins and display cabinets for you to store all your stuff in. And it even comes with a place to store all your claws. More weapon racks here. And we have a place for all your dragon priest masks, paragons and butterfly jars. Which is all pretty cool. So all in all for a small home this is pretty nice. It does set you back 7,500 gold, but it's definitely a step up in my eyes to the original homes in Skyrim. So let's jump straight into number 2. So if you watch my Night King video, you will have already seen this home. It is indeed Mere Watch. To get this home, all you have to do is go to Morthal, head north over the bridge, and then east past the lumber mill, and eventually you'll find it. Now when you first arrive, you'll find this unfortunate Nord on the floor here. Investigate his body and you'll find his journal which starts the short quest. Cast a flame spell on the seal just in front and we see a hair of light appear and run over towards this structure that looks a little like a well. The hair will light this up which will unlock the door and now we can enter. And as far as the quest goes, that's it, you are done. You have acquired Mere Watch. Again, I mean the detailing in this home is incredible. The home itself is sort of hexagonal in shape and the ground floor is a living quarters. We have this living area to the front here with a fireplace. It looks like the previous occupants have been having a sleepover. But what a great place this is though. Whoever designed this did a great job I feel. Shrine of Stendar here. And it's got the maps on the wall of Skyrim and I think that's Solstein maybe. But we head around the exterior and we have a smaller single beds. Two of those, just like Tundra Homestead. And then a great dining table at the back of the room. A cooking area here. And then finally, a master bed. Yeah, this place is awesome. 
but you head through this doorway here to go up to the second level and here we come to the mages quarters and immediately in front of us we have an enchanting table and then on the outside we have a load of mannequins armor racks and places to store all our unique items like the paragons a lot of the racks in here are actually specific to certain weapons and stuff which is pretty cool and there are so many in here I bet this place looks awesome if you had everything filled and they've covered off so many bases I mean look at all these unique swords and shields and stuff and we even have staffs as well as there's a load of spaces for these and then the dragon priest mass as well I feel like this is a real completist location and on the right we have a place to make your own staffs as well if you wanted to dabble with that which is pretty cool and in the center of this room we have all our crafting tables and we even have our own garden so you can do your own alchemy here and I love the light at the top of this room it's really cool so yeah quite a bit different to Tundra Homestead but for a mage type character or a conjurer I think Mia Watch is awesome and it's totally free as well For the next home we need to head southeast of Rorikstead in Whiterun and here you will find a farm, Golden Hills Plantation. On approach the ghostly figure stood on the porch will run towards you and attack. Defeat him and you'll start the quest, The Unquiet Dead, which will ask us to search the plantation for clues. Head inside and up the stairs and you'll find Ervil's journal on the desk in the bedroom. Read this and we'll learn that the previous occupants, Ervil and John Quill, bought this rundown farmhouse to start a plantation and to raise their son, Rin, but things went down quite quickly for them. Rin was sickly and the wife John Quill was able to cure him with potions he had concocted. Ervil had his suspicions about his wife's activities and he didn't like it and after their son Rin disappeared, he started to wonder if she was to blame for his disappearance. Was his wife a witch? For the next clue we need to head into the basement and push this button just to the right hand side, slightly hidden by this pillar. This will open up a secret doorway behind the bookcase and in here we will find the body of John Quill with an axe buried in her chest. As soon as you enter this room, the ghost of John Quill will attack you. Deal with her and read her diary located on her alchemy table and in her account we will learn that the plantation wasn't really her idea, it was Ervil's dream but she just went along with it. She's worried about money and her husband's ambition for the farm getting them into debt. Her alchemy is what saved their son from his sickness but she hates that her husband doesn't see it this way. She then speaks of her dismay at Rin's disappearance and whether her husband could be behind it. In fact, she's certain it was him. He took her boy away. She doesn't normally dabble in poison, but she knows how to make it. For the third clue, head back upstairs and head into Rin's room. And down by the side of his bed, we'll find Rin's journal. And in here, Rin will talk about his dreams of being a soldier and joining the Legion. He will say how his ma and pa don't want him to do this and his pa wants him to run the farm after him. He also hates how they always fight, and to show them that he can do it, he'll head down to the old well near their home and kill a wolf, and that will show them. We can see where this is going, can't we guys? Head outside and we'll find Ervil's body, along with a note on the floor, which details the last moments after realising he has been poisoned. Now to find the final clue, we need to head east from the house and head towards the three or four strange looking trees in the distance. And here we'll find the well and tragically the skeleton of Rin with his toy sword. Although I had a glitch and the skeleton wasn't here. Pick up Rin's sword and return it to the table in his room and the family will be reunited. Thanks a lot. Here, take this for all your hard work. Rin will give you the key to the home and now we have completed the quest. We own Golden Hills Plantation. And you can now plant crops and live as a farmer if you wish. The home itself is pretty basic, but if this is something you want to dabble with, or you really like crafting and potion making with ingredients, then this might be the home for you. For the next home, travel to Solitude and head for the Winking Skeever. Look at this old fella, having a great time. Is this a silent disco? I'm too old to work, but that don't make me too old to drink. Not too old to drink? You do you, old man. So now we are inside you want to head to the right of the bar area and on this table at the back you'll find a book, The Restless. Read this to start the quest of the same name. 
We now need to go into Castle Dower to try and get access to one of the cells. Life's too oh god, he's back. To too hard to face sober? Sounds like you've got a great life, mate. You just drink all day. Hmm? Go into Castle Dower and either bribe, intimidate, or persuade the guard to let you in. After reading the note and examining the loose brick, you'll find a map to Blackbone Isle. Follow the map to the location and you will encounter some bandits, led by Celeste, which you will have to defeat. On her you'll find a unique sword, the Blackwater Blade. Her note is great though, I love how this is written. The crew always ask me, how can we be pirates if we ain't got no ship? And I tell them, we're Blackwater brigands, we don't need no stinking ship, we can rob folks on land. And they ask me, but don't that make us bandits? And I tell them, good point. Maybe we should find a ship. After finishing the note, climb in the ship and travel to a new location, Blackbone Isle, and inside you'll find Dead Man's Dread. Now visually this is one of the most impressive locations in this list. I mean it's a pirate ship. Awesome. The ship is swarming with skeletons, obviously. I mean why wouldn't it be? So deal with all these outside first of all, and then we can head inside the ship. The place is quite creepy inside and there are more skeletons to deal with on the interior. Every room seems to have skeletons in, either on beds or tables or the floor or so on. Something bad must have happened here that claimed a lot of lives. And as we delve deeper into the ship you'll find a bar area with a lot more skeletons. And finally we find the captain's quarters. The captain is at his desk, looking a little worse for wear. And on the wall is a unique sword, Cyrus' sabre. The captain's journal on the desk isn't required as part of the quest, however I recommend reading it. We learn that this ship arrived on Blackbone Isle early in the third era, very old. And the crew were tragically trapped here with no way out, and with food running low they were forced to choose their own way out or die of starvation and their last act was to commit their souls to the ship, to defend it and the possessions of Cyrus after their deaths. Now clip the sword from the rack and the clothes from the chest just in front of the bed. Now you can dress as a pirate if you wish. I did not plan this when I created this character Bruce, but I think he actually suits this get up. Anyway, now we'll have to fight our way out of the ship or be forever entombed here with the crew. Randomly, after I'd left the ship, I got a note from a courier asking me to claim the ship. Only after I'd gone back and entered did it actually become mine. What do you think of this home? Visually I love it, and I like the quest as well. It's just a shame it's three loading screens away in such a remote location. I can't see me using this as a regular base, but it's cool nonetheless. The quest for the fifth home on this list starts with a note from a courier called Dinner Invitation inviting us to somewhere called Bloodchill Manor. Now without knowing anything about this, my immediate thought was, that's a trap. Right, I mean, this just sounds like trouble. But we're the Dragonborn, so obviously we're going to attend. When we enter, we'll have to speak to the waiter. Now this home is another incredible design. I love how every home is completely unique, and yet they are all very well done. Yes, Crossing the bridge, there will be other guests outside, plus a few very obvious vampires. Open the door and head inside and speak to the waiter, who is also a vampire. Oh nice. Need something? This is going to be fun. I don't think any of the options matter here, but seeing as we know how this is going to pan out, just skip the pleasantries and show me to my table. We can now head inside and we'll be seated at the banquet. Flute playing vampires, oh and a few gargoyle statues as well. Now I applaud whoever wrote this quest, as this bit is very well done. The note is basically a letter to the guests from the late owner of Bloodchill Manor, and every guest was a past friend, lover, or colleague of theirs, but every one of them has wronged the late owner in some way, and as we get through the note it becomes obvious that the owner has set them up to see if any will survive, and your part in this, to try and save their lives, or to sit back and observe the chaos unfold, and with that, drinks are served. We know what's coming next. I don't know if it's possible to save the other guests, I think only one of them got away on my save, but it was entertaining at least.
please. Mercy. <laughs> And now this quest is complete, the keys to Bloodchill Manor are yours and you're free to explore your new home. I don't know if the previous owner was a vampire, I'm guessing they probably were by the decor. I mean this place even has coffins. It follows a similar setup to the other homes though. We have two children's beds and this one has a vampire doll on, nice touch. The decor is nice though, very detailed. In the master bedroom we have all our crafting tables, a staff enchanter as well, and there's lots of storage here. And then round this corner we have a few coffins, but I like that this room has two levels to it. And coming up to the second level we find the master bedroom. There's so much decor in here that it really adds to the feel I think, and that's what was probably missing from some of the earlier homes. They were decorated, but I mean this is just another level. We also have a nice dining and kitchen area here which is also fully kitted out. And then there is another room which has a workbench in it and then finally at the bottom a prison. And then yeah the banquet hall we were previously in has all the same places to store all your unique equipment which is nice. Verin, is he like the steward of this place? Azura bless you. Azura bless you. I bet he is fun at parties. Azura bless you. So yeah, that's home number five. Very different again to all the rest, but perfect for a vampire. What do you think of this home and would you live here? Home number six also comes via a note. This one is entitled The Warrior's Challenge, whereby a Nord warrior reaches out to challenge you in combat. The home is located here on the map, it's actually just a little south of Golden Hills Plantation and this is another incredible location resembling a Nordic longhouse. Approach the owner, aid Vina, and say you yeah? received her letter. I understand. And then there's this awkward moment where she walks quite nonchalantly to pick up her sword and shield, ready for combat. Fight or die well. After defeating her you can take the key to Hendraheim. There's also a quite a sad touch if you read her note. It indirectly references the current civil war and she doesn't like that Nords are fighting themselves under ever changing banners. It sounds like she killed a friend on the battlefield and now is full of shame and she misses them and wishes to die in battle so she can join her clan in Sovngarde. But I guess she gave her the death that she wanted. Grab the key and head inside. Now this is my favourite of all the interiors I think. It's like Yorvaska 2.0. I mean, look at this for a living space. Definitely an awesome location for anyone wanting to play as a Nord warrior, or anyone in fact. Around the exterior we have lots of mannequins and racks to house your weapons. The central half dominates this room, and we have a bar area to the rear. And then on the other side we have the dining table and pantry area. And then finally at the back we have the living space, with two small beds, a desk and the master bed. There's also a second level to this home, which isn't via a loading screen, even better. And this has more racks and storage for weapons, plus all the usual unique items as the other homes have. But I've just noticed we have a space for the rueful axe. I can't remember if I saw this elsewhere, but this is an odd one though, as if you choose this as part of the Daedric quest to kill Barbus. This doesn't count as a Daedric artifact, does it? Only the mask does. As such, I've never picked it. But anyway and this concludes the tour of Hendraheim. What do you think of this location? I love this one, a great location for lots of build types. It doesn't feel as specific to certain characters as some of them. Home number 7 is Gallows Hall, located at Mara's Eye Pond, southwest of Windhelm, and this one we have to discover ourselves. Just get rid of these mud crabs first and I'll show you where it is on the map. It's just located here. Head inside and we find the body of Nara on the floor, along with a few plea notes and her journal. Reading any of these start the quest, Dreams of the Dead, which is a great short quest. If these notes weren't creepy enough, everything in the room starts flying around as if possessed by some poltergeist. 
I didn't read up on this quest before I started it, so this really caught me off guard. But read Nara's journal to learn that she was an apprentice of an arch necromancer, and she tried to steal some of his artifacts and turn against him, but he trapped her here. She obviously didn't solve his riddle, so now we have to find the arch necromancer's clues and solve it to get out of here. The first clue involves the torches. Head over to the map and we need to follow the journey in the riddle. First we need to remove Morthal, then Falkreath, then Nightgate Inn, and finally Font Doonstad. All of the torches are labelled, so this isn't too difficult to do. But after doing this, the poltergeist stops, which to be honest, I was happy about. Now pick up the Staff of Worms and find a use for the staff. And what we need to do here is equip it and use it on the skeleton in the coffin, and this will raise the skeleton up. Examine the skeleton and you'll find a key on it, and this key will open up the safe on the other side of the room. And in this safe we'll find a unique helmet, the Bloodworm Helm, plus the second clue. This clue states we need to find a way into the dream world, and in order to do this activate the Shrine of Vermina, and then go and sleep in the bedroll for one hour. Now we're inside the dream world, we need to search for three specific soul gems, the ones entitled Dreamers. They are all located inside coffins within the central room, two are quite close together. But once we find them all, we are transported back out of the dream world, and the third note will be located on the table in the middle. Read this to learn that we need to place all the gems in the soul gem holder. The fourth soul gem is right by Nara's corpse. Place all these in here and they will be turned into black soul gems and the quest will be complete. And we now own Gallows Hall. We can now explore the deeper depths of this creepy place. And the lower level contains the living quarters. And in here we find a second unique helmet, the helm of Orin Bearclaw, which comes with a journal on it written by the Arch Necromancer. Also in this room there are a few other items for mages, plus a few coffins, and a master bed and places to store your items. Travelling deeper into this hall we find some skeletons hanging off the walls. Nice. And we now find a very unique room within Skyrim, the Bone Forge. When I first opened this door I was like, oh wow, are all these the victims of the Arch Necromancer? But reading the notes on the table tells us that you can use the Bone Forge to summon skeletons, plus the stronger types we encounter in the Dawnguard DLC like Bone Men and so on. But what a creepy location this is. I think it's not helped by the eerie music that plays in the background. It's the same backing music as Harkon's Castle I think. I'm not sure I'd want to live here, put it that way. But what this place does bring is the unique Staff of Worms which can reanimate a dead body to fight for you permanently, which is an incredibly powerful effect. We also get the two unique helmets, plus the bone forge, so what it loses in comfort, it definitely makes up for our usefulness. What do you think of Gallows Hall? Less of a home as such I feel, but if you want to play as a necromancer it would be a great choice. To get the penultimate home on this list we need to travel to Frozen Hearth in Winterhold. Inside here, in the room on the left hand side, we find the journal of the Argonian explorer and treasure hunter, Seek's Ancient Artifacts. And this starts the quest to Sanctuary and the Manufactory, where we have to discover a dwarven location which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce correctly. This is located in the mountains south of Windhelm, right next to Kagrenzel. Enter Frostfoot Cave to find this location. Once inside, we'll have to kill a few bandits guarding the entrance. Now we're inside we'll be given another task, to access the manufactory. Immediately in front of us there will be a dead skeever on the floor, and as we explore the ground level we will encounter a few more skeevers, plus a few more bandits which we'll need to dispose of. But eventually you will find the lift to take us down to the next level. Now we're inside the manufactory, you'll find the body of Seek's ancient artifacts and his journal which lists items we need to collect. Luckily they are all in the same room as us. We need three cogs, three actuators and one dwarven oil. Now we have these, activate the dwarven sphere overseer button to create a dwarven sphere. 
and give the sphere the parts to deliver. And now we can go back to where the unfortunate Argonian was and activate the central button and this will turn the manufactory back on. Now we need to go down into the room on the left hand side where the dwarven sphere went and create a dwarven spider. Now you need a centurion dynamo core in order to do this but you can find them in the storage facility on the other side of this room. And now you've got the core create a spider renovator who we can now instruct to tidy the place up. And there are three locations in total back on the upper level. Summon the spider in each of these to clean the place up and we need to wait 24 hours each time for it to finish the work. So just head outside and wait and then you can go back in and just repeat. And do that for each area of the house to complete the renovation work. Congratulations you now own the most massive home in all of Skyrim. I mean look at the size of this place. Here is the full map of this location, and it's absolutely huge. And it comes with all the expected things. We have lots of places to like store your things. You've got the different beds that you can sleep in, so there's some that are the Dwemer stone construction, plus you've got other beds. And there are also places to craft items and so on, and kitchen areas. And we even have a few unique rooms, like this one which has these baths in, which is a cool feature. There's also a steam room which still works, which is totally random, but awesome. Bruce often uses the steam room in his full dragon armour, it helps him sweat more, you see. There's also this huge room with a big banquet style dinner table in. And if you head to the back of the room, there's like a throne chair which we can sit in and have a ponder. Pulling off his best Yal Balgraf impersonation here. What an awesome place this is. It's a shame it's quite remote, being at the very edge of the eastern side of the map. I think I'll definitely use this location, but if it was more central, it'd make travelling to and from it and other locations a lot quicker, I feel. If you weren't using fast travel, it is. If you fast travel everywhere, then it doesn't really matter. And finally for the last home on our list we need to become a member of the Thieves Guild in Riften. This home is very simple to acquire once we've done that. Just find Veckel the man inside, usually in the bar area, and tell him you are looking to make a home here in the Ratways. He will say they have a home for sale for 7,500 gold. Do this for the key to Shadowfoot Sanctum, and you can find Shadowfoot Sanctum inside the Ratway. This is quite an odd location I thought, especially for a house, but I guess it's perfect for someone in the Thieves Guild. Initially you come into part of the running sewer, and on the right hand side there are a few coin purses, gold ingots and a skeleton. Head down where the water runs and you'll come to the entrance hall to Shadowfoot Sanctum. In this area we have a chest and crafting tables to improve your smithing and so on. I forgot to show you the water section here however. If you jump in there's a secret entrance under the water which takes you right outside, which is quite cool. Go through the door and inside you'll find the living quarters, which are actually pretty nicely decorated. After seeing the sewer entrance I wasn't expecting much from this place. The central room is a living area where the dining table is situated. And towards the back we have the kitchen and bar area, which are nicely decorated. The other small room to the right of here we find a bedroom with two small single beds in. Then through the double doors in the corner you'll find the master bedroom, which again, really nicely done this I think. So that's it for the new homes in Skyrim Anniversary Edition. What do you think of these homes? Do any of them stand out as favourites to you? I guess they're all aimed at different builds aren't they? Hendraheim and Tundra Homestead are Nordic, Mia Watch is very mage focused, Bloodchill Manor for a vampire, Shadowfoot Sanctum for the Thieves Guild and so on. I like them all in their own way though. Each one's very different but they all look really nice. I probably wouldn't use Dead Man's Dread on because of the loading screen to get to it, but all the others I can see myself using, especially the central ones like Hendraheim, Mere Watch, Tundra Homestead and Bloodchill Manor. I hope you found this guide useful. As always, if you like my videos, please give it a like and subscribe, and that way you'll never miss any of my future Skyrim content. See you next time.